So once again, thanking you, and uh, you may start your uh, lecture now. Yeah, thank Please you so much, sir. Thank you so much yeah. sir, for giving me this opportunity. And yeah. we are all here to help the students and whatever we gain knowledge, we want to give it back to the students also so that there is interaction, not a lecture. Uh, uh, so here I would, uh, should I start with my lecture? Is it okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so like I, I'll be talking on India's foreign policy and as we know, uh, I would just give a gist of, uh, because there will be a lot of students from all background maybe, I'm not sure about the students, what is their background and all, if they are not from all from international relations. So, uh, like if in uh, see our foreign policy, uh, in recent times we have uh, witnessed a tremendous change in our foreign policy which is uh, more aggressive and focused on national interest. And uh, there are different approaches uh, that India has evolved with uh, in the last decade. And if you see, it pursues several foreign policies. So if, uh, just to give a gist of uh, how, how for, what is foreign policy, if we know. So as we are aware that the basic nature of any entity never changes. State is all considered as an entity and foreign policy is the basic nature, which ultimately forms the personality, that is the state. So each and every state has its own personality, like every human being, we are having a certain level of personality according to our background, according to our education, according to our civilization, religion, culture, traditions, we have formed into a kind of a personality. Same is with the state also. And when I say state as an entity, I mean foreign policy will be the nature of the uh, state. So as we have evolved with time and upgraded our uh, ourselves according to needs and requirements and the situation we are in where the ambience and uh, environment affects our personality without changing the fundamental values. Uh, and the similar way we can, you know, see the state that nation evolves within the geography polity and economy and it's uh, with the international relations and its domestic policies so basically if we see india our uh, fundamental principles uh, i would like to just uh, give few fundamental principles on which we have whether this is whatever the government is these fundamental principles are always followed like we had panchil we had policy. We have policy of non-alignment, policy of anti-colonialism, anti-racism, peaceful settlement of international disputes, foreign foreign and economic aid support to UN, international law, and a just and equal world order. We have always stood for all this. So in the recent times, if we see, we have uh, witnessed a tremendous change in our foreign policy, which is more aggressive, like I said, and focused on national interests. So there are different approaches that India has evolved within the last decade. It pursues, like I would mention, few several uh, few foreign policies to widen the global influence like we have been seeing. So uh, neighborhood first policy is one of them. Act East policy, which used to be look East policy, but after coming of uh, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2014, this uh, Lukis policy changed in uh, sorry Lukis policy changed into Actis policy, and there is Saga that is S A G A R to ensure the security of the global interest. So the neighborhood first policy. If I want to if you want to know, I will just um, explain in a few lines that India's approach towards the management of relations with countries in its immediate neighborhood is the neighborhood first policy. The policy is aimed at enhancing physical, digital, people-to-people -people connectivity across the region, as well as augmenting trade and commerce. Uh, the Modi government's regional outlook under the neighborhood uh, first approach has sought to promote regional stability and prosperity, recognizing the importance of a secure and cooperative neighborhood for, its, uh, for India's overall development and security. So recently we have seen that our prime minister itself has reached to our neighbors and aimed at resolving long-standing issues and fostering closer economic and cultural ties 
uh, amongst uh, the neighborhood and india also seeks to counter china's influence in the region particularly through the act east policy which seeks to deepen engagement with south east asian nations so the focus of new delhi south asia um, policy has shifted from pakistan with uh, which it used to be uh, with which it has long been preoccupied you know to to the more productive uh, towards like bay of bengal maritime geography which lends itself to a more organic linkage with south and southeast asia so uh, when i speak about the act east policy and even in neighborhood policy we have seen that uh, you know uh, whatever happened in maldives there was some oil we tried to solve it out we kept a balanced approach and even in the recent uh, turmoil in bangladesh we have done whatever we could so it is always being like this that we are considering giving more importance to our neighbors and that is this first uh, neighborhood policy that came into being so the act is policy which used to be lucky's policy the act is policy emphasizes proactive uh, pragmatic focus on the extended neighborhood in the indo pacific region and in this indo pacific region it comprises of almost 40 countries i can't name all of them like australia bangladesh bhutan brunei all these places the the objective is to promote economic cooperation cultural ties and developing strategic relationship with countries in the indo pacific region keeping china's ambitions under watch because we have been always have to face problems in our neighborhood or near uh, our neighborhood uh, due to uh, you know the encroachment kind of a policy which china has been uh, uh, has been projecting all these years so india's relationship with the association of southeast nation that is asean is at the core of india's act east policy which has completed almost 10 years recently and the focus is geo strategic to give a strong sign of power to china recent uh, visit we see of our prime minister narendra modi to brunei and singapore uh, brunei is a very small country but very rich in resources very rich in resources and and so as singapore so on the line of act east policy which covers defense hydrocarbons renew renewable energy different mous have been signed people to people contact which is a kind of human bridge that has been created so india has uh, also enhanced the engagement in various multilateral and plurilateral institutions in the region such as asean that is i, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, and asean defense minister meeting plus there is asean regional forum there is expanded asean maritime forum there is indian ocean rim association there is indian ocean commission and indian ocean naval symposium and there is quad quad is an informal strategic pro forum comprises of four nations that is usa india australia and japan among others and the third which i mentioned earlier is sagar that is s a g a r that is security and growth for all the region this is this policy was first articulated by prime minister narendra modi in mauritius in 2015 under this concept india envisages sages of pre open inclusive peaceful and prosperous indo pacific region one which is built on a rule based international order freedom of navigation and over flight and mutual respect for sovereignty so we have always stood for all this now the year of uh, year 2023 if uh, we see the year 2023 has special significance for india's foreign policy as new delhi presided over two major international forums that we all witnessed the g20 and the shanghai cooperation organization in both the cases focus was on sustainability india's sustainable mission which is important for each one of us to provide and think for the present and the future generations as it is based on environmental economic and social development which includes climate change and loss of biodiversity loss of ecosystem land degradation and air and water pollution so sustainable engagement i mean here uh, sustainability of all kinds whether it is about relationships it is about resources 
energy of security of the environment or anything. India has always stood for sustainability. Like I said, for relationship, we have been trying to go every nook and corner of the globe to have the sustainable relation at least, you know. And with the rise in geopolitical tension, India has kept itself balanced in overall development and tried to sustain during the global pandemic also and in the situation of turmoil in the global environment due to war in Russia and Ukraine, which is still ongoing. And India is playing a major role to continue the supply chain like that we see, uh, seen in uh, Russia. Excuse me, I'll just take water. So we have seen in case of Russia when all sanctions were uh, you know placed on Russia, India was the only country which kept on having su continued the supply chains. It uh, took the crude oil and you know we uh, tried to involve ourselves even during that time. And um, even pandemic time, we've seen how India approached to all the uh, neighborhood and other countries also helping them. So India is playing a major role to continue the supply chain and also bringing peace in order to stabilize the global uh, global security. India will and is encouraging collective solutions to deal with major global challenges such as food and energy security, which, have, which, have, uh, which we have been doing. And Indian leaders have emphasized that they believe in just one world, not in first world or a third world, with common challenges and common needs. India's announcement that it aims to reach net zero emission by 2070 and to meet 50% of the electricity requirements from renewable energy sources by 2030 is a significant intention for global fight against climate change. So all these things, whatever ha happening in the world is due to our foreign policy. And we have been very aggressive and very you know, focused on this uh, to bring in sustainable or sustainability of all kinds, like I mentioned before. So India's 1.3 billion human capital as a large developing economy and its ambitious adaptation to climate are not only transformational for India, but for the entire globe. So now the if we go, like I said, in 2023, we've seen these two things and our kind of foreign policy has evolved and it has like we have, you know, we have always tried to emphasize on Vasudev Kutumbakam. India's foreign policy in the 21st century is based on Vasudev Kutumbakam, one earth, one family, one future, which is an ancient Sanskrit text and denotes the value of all life human, animal, plant, and microorganisms, and their interdependence on the planet, and also emphasizes on all different, different uh, development and movement for a cleaner, greener, and bluer future. Like uh, we always have stood for, not for something, uh, for only ourselves. We have talked always for the world, which, which is going to help entire world, whether it is International Yoga Day, International Millet Day, One Earth, One Family, and World, One World has always been our motto. That is how we have sustained good and cordial relationship with many nations, whether it is on the grounds of history, culture, civilization, politics, or economy. We have assured a certain level of trust. India, in fact, is a first responder in crisis that we have always seen during pandemic or in the neighborhood, wherever the crisis has happened. I won't go into the details. We are always, um, you know, we are always, we are aware of uh, the neighborhood policy, uh, the crisis which happened and how India responded to it. So being the leader of the global South, helping financially or other assistance to his friendly neighbor and at the global level. And we have proved during uh, pandemic war, pandemic wars in Ukraine to refusing to bow to Western pressures on sanctions also, you know. We have showed them that we can stand on our own. We will continue the relationship which we have been sustaining, whether it is Russia. We know uh, Russia has been, uh, you know, all weather friends kind of a country for India. So we have showed them that we are not going to go according to what West tells us. We are going to go according to our own national interest. So here, uh, even in case of recent turmoil, like I said, in Bangladesh also, uh, we took note of India as the rising power and sustainable 
um, in uh, you know uh, a kind of textile we have uh, developed a relationship of textile exchange with bangladesh and so many other things but due to turmoil uh, things have changed and the uh, uh, but our policy has never changed I, even in that case we have always kept ourselves in a balanced mode we have tried to retain our relationship and balance our relationship as much as possible on the grounds of peace and sustainability and the other uh, which is in recent uh, we have been seeing in our foreign policy is multi after this is multilateralism multilateralism which is a theory and practice of international relations uh, that involves multiple countries working together uh, to achieve a common goal which is based on the principle like inclusion solidarity and consultation and aims to create a more peaceful prosperous and sustainable world and india is following religiously and it is an important aspect of our foreign policy which is obvious since 2014 and modi personal modi's personal commitment and efforts has been remarkable in this and uh, you know uh, there has been you know com complex multipolarity we have seen in india's foreign policy focusing on multi alignment which is challenging but the shades of the indian strategic calculations brighten the rationalization behind the external behavior india has the fastest growing diplomatic network as of march 2022 india has around 202 missions and diplomatic posts around the globe india's growing economic ties and its ambition to position itself as a leader of the global south uh, its diplomatic footprint is increasing and it is on its go and even in the uh, if we see in the um, modi's third term uh, g7 and everything just went smoothly you know just after taking up the the third term so the 20 uh, the another very important uh, policy which has been you know, diverted to the, towards 2047 Viksit Bharat. Inclusivity is our motto. Therefore, when we speak of Bharat ki prosperity, we mean Vishwa ki prosperity. Reform, perform and transform is the motto of our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We believe in political stability and economic growth at the domestic and international level. There has to be a balanced and peaceful environment in the neighboring countries and the world to move on the path of development. Our Prime Minister urging and requesting for peace in Russia and Ukraine war and in Gaza, mentioning that this is not the era of war, quote unquote, and peace talks cannot take place in the battleground. So we have been imposing or we have been, you know, trying to give our thoughts out that we are not standing by the war, but we are standing by the, our country. We are friendly to Ukraine as well as to Russia. We are trying to balance and we are trying to Im give our own thoughts, what we think about the war. We are not going against any of these countries, but we are just trying to push our thoughts uh, into them so that there is some kind, some approach uh, to make them feel or realize that world means the peaceful environment for any kind of development. And being the largest democracy of the world with the economy on a sound footing, India has a huge market which represents around 90% of global GDP, 80% of uh, global trade and two-thirds of the world population. And world is looking towards Bharat for engagement in all aspects. The past decade, however, has witnessed a phenomenal change in both the scale and uh, scope of global politics. The shifting balance of power and increasing disillusionment uh, with China in the West have turned global attention to India. Now the world's fastest growing, fastest growing large democracy is on the way and coming in front of China and giving China to move out, to make their own space there, you know, and its strategic position in the Indo-Pacific and New Delhi's growing willing, willingness to be more proactive on the global footage, on global stage, in line with its aim of taking on the role of a rule shaper rather than a mere rule taker. So Modi's diplomacy on the global stage has given wins to India's aspirations of playing a larger role globally. And India's foreign policy has made the most of this inflection 
point in world affairs and the world now see sees it as a nation that is more than willing to contribute to global governance modi's assertive foreign policy i'm mentioning this because the government which is ruling any country and the foreign policy is always developed or evolved accordingly so modi's assertive foreign policy approach has redefined india's image to that of a more proactive global player the fragmentation of the international order has created space for india to flex its foreign policy muscles india's growing economy increased relevance in multilateral negotiations devoted to tackling you know global and transnational challenges and a strategic geography have made it an indispensable partner to nearly all the great powers so we are having engaging with all the great powers according to our national interests and any foreign policy of any country is always sticking to its national interests first and then to the other things so we have been giving a motto of one world one family uh, kind of a thing just to bringing all all of us together because in this globalized world the globe has shrunk a lot there's shrinking of things and everybody is coming together we have seen in pandemic we have seen in wars that how every body is affected war is taking somewhere else but each and every country is affected by the war either it is to uh, due to supply chains or it is due to any kind of other disturbances even in pandemic we've seen that no country remained isolated we had to be together so this is what globalization has brought about and we have always thought of uh, our motto has been for a globe entire globe because until unless we think of all together we cannot move with our own foreign policy motto the outcome of the elections uh, recently in 2024 has rebuilt india's image as a robust democracy the new set goals to achieve the target of uh, making india <coughs> the world's third largest economy by 2029 there are certain list which i will uh, which included in this uh, 22 after this 2024 elections that are foreign policy is going to focus on these so i'll just mention few that is economic and bureaucratic reforms attracting foreign investment and global supply chains to india increasing the share of manufacturing in the economy building an advanced technology base including in areas such as semiconductors and electronics becoming more self reliant in defense manufacturing and expanding defense exports there are greater digitization of the economy expanding india's soft power the overarching goal is to make india a developed economy by 2047 and india's leadership and presence in global forums including the success of the g20 chaired by india figured on it and uh, the neighborhood first policy was reiterated uh, no mention was made specific uh, specifically of the us or any other country but collaboration with countries in the indo pacific was mentioned always being on focus with the growth and security of all as a goal and you know china too was not mentioned uh, is not never being mentioned but accelerating the development of infrastructure on the india china border has shown that how our foreign policy is moving towards that to be for becoming uh, a stable eco economy by 2047 and uh, support for israel on the issue of terrorism india's aspiration for permanent membership of the un security council so <clears throat> all these things substantial gains in the global spread of india's soft power such as the international yoga day which we celebrate and ayurveda the return of uh, you know stolen artifacts or to the country and encouraging the study of indian classical languages in educational institutions across the world ho niche baith gaya kar gaya ab to aapki awaaz suni mein aa gaya nahi excuse me yeah don't disturb yeah so uh, so here i mean to say in uh, whatever the recent developments that that we have seen is uh, towards uh, foreign uh, developing or carving or evolving uh, a good a more refined foreign policy 
which include which is more of inclusive inclusivity it is not about only because single handedly we cannot do anything like in society one person cannot you know exist without meeting the other one so we are even during the days of barter system it happened that we was well, somebody growing vegetables the other was buying somebody is growing wheat other other is not buying but it is it was just barter system giving giving and taking from give and take was always there in the society the formation of state and its boundary after that only this international relations developed where we started developing relationship with the other states so all these things what we see is and we can see under this framework of our foreign policy so here i would like to you know, stop and if you have any other questions regarding this i'll i'm happy to answer thank you so much uh, thank you dr vaishali uh, for uh, very exhaustive uh, i i should say uh coverage of uh, india's foreign policy after 2034 new goals new missions new ambitions they all have to be uh, taken into account and you have very well explained that this is going to be uh, india's future foreign policy so uh, now i will like to ask the students to put their questions and remember you first introduce yourself then ask question in a simple and clear manner and uh, while uh, asking questions you should uh, switch on your video also so come on be quick so may i ask a question yeah yeah go on uh, good evening ma'am good evening sir uh, thank you ma'am for the wonderful session ma'am uh, uh, my name is isma and i have done my graduation from delhi university in 2023 Ma'am, my question was: uh, as uh, it is said that uh, one of the limitations of uh, neighborhood first policy is that he, uh, India act as a big bullying brother. So, do you think that uh, there would be a change in India's relation with Bangladesh from uh, being a friendly neighborhood to a problem state? As we can see that this could be an opportunity for China to uh, uh, have an to attack. Or to have an influence uh, in uh, among Bangladesh. Okay, so uh, see here in uh, in case of like when I'm talking about neighborhood first policy, uh, we are trying to manage our relationship. Now in Bangladesh also you've seen how we have supported uh, the uh, whatever happened. The turmoil happened, and uh, nobody was you know accepting. you know we have given the space to the to uh, to these people like we have never you know we have never gone out of the way to indulge in their uh, problems because it was domestic uh, because things are uh, of course uh, we will say that uh, it was provoked by some country to you know destabilize india but india that is what i have said that india's approach towards the management of relationship with countries or immediate neighbors has been always on its own policies we have always tried to always tried to give our hands to support them and if you are uh, tell me that uh, we, it is going to change because there is lot of of course there will be a change because there is lot of turmoil now in bangladesh first they need to stabilize themselves we cannot go and stabilize their you know what what whatever problems they are facing yes but they have we have lost that entire build up uh, the relationship which we have been having these all these years is these years and uh, now the until as the situation changes in bangladesh uh, then only we can you know again try to rebuild because this is the domestic issues which has which which has erupted so india with its connectivity with its you know with its uh, whatever uh, uh, help india can give is trying to but when the things are in domestic we never poke our nose there you know until is they stabilize and it will take time so we are we have been our policies always have been very open like i gave the example of russia in ukraine also russia has been our friends for ages and west had all the sanctions 
but still india never said against putin or never said against ukraine but it has always stood in uh, between them asking for peace and we have continued our relationship with russia after all the sanctions which was placed by west we continued with our supply chains because we have to like it, it's a very small thing even if you see in neighbors if you you cannot change your neighbors you know you cannot you cannot um, put your neighbors according to your own choice but you have to adjust with them okay you can have you know, just say hi to them or you can go and meet them and have dinner with them you know it depends how much you extend your uh, relationship we have been trying our best whatever we could so we will not change our policies according to their uh, you know um, disbalance in their or some kind of turmoil in their country but yes the relationship will take time because until this they stabilize how can we expect to in, engage ourselves okay so first we'll take time and to engage of course uh, the new government uh, uh, our government uh, congratulated that, them also and of course uh, this uh, relation will the uh, relationship will continue but uh, we need time because everything has uh, you know all of a sudden has changed so we they have to stabilize to you know uh, engage uh, to any country for that matter so india is all, always open hand open with his open hand and uh, we have always thought of stability and prosperity and uh, importance is always given on cooperation so we will uh, extend our cooperation and uh, our engagements as much as possible so let's wait and see how the domestic things uh, stabilize there in bangladesh yeah next question please be quick next question <clears throat> i think there should be many more questions hello any other question good evening ma'am uh, yes go ahead yes sir ma'am myself vivek mehra i have completed my post graduation from pondicherry university in may i have a question on india's foreign policy neighborhood uh, ma'am india is doing uh, very well in extended neighborhood foreign policy but we are we are seeing that india facing challenges in our uh, in its backyard ma'am uh, south asia is becoming one of the most unstable region in the world and uh, despite uh, india's providing grants aid to its neighbor country they are using china card also ma'am and uh, uh, they con they are considering india as a big bullying big bullying partner brother but uh, for their economics uh, prosperity and uh, stay, uh, security uh, they comes to india so should india continue uh, there's a dilemma is india's foreign policy india's foreign policy towards south asia that how should we deal with the small states because they are using china card ma'am so in what should india do to counter this thing thank you uh, if you are talking about south asia uh, you are talking about south asia right yes ma'am so that is what i mentioned that we have tried to make our way out we were engaged for so many years towards uh, pakistan like i mentioned before also now we are if we have just stopped talking about pakistan because it was not working out it wasn't working but then again we have been trying to be friendly with other countries where we could so we have been supporting them after all the you know uh, uh, the crisis which has come and it has been like you said china china has always been doing that but in that case we are also building up relation with other countries like i said we are building up relation with major countries we are not going away from us we are having lot of uh, uh, good uh, bilateral relationship with the uh, us also and uh, um, in, on the backyard of uh, china if you see is mongolia also it's a country where uh, you know india is has having very good relationship with mongolia and uh, we are having very good relationship with russia also so we are trying to uh, cultivate our own path and in in between we are trying to help them also because we are always standing by peace we cannot go like china they have their own policies that is what we are saying that we are sustaining relationship when you are sustaining relationship it means it is not smooth but you are trying to grab those uh, you know powers some or the other way in order to stabilize your 
uh, uh, your neighborhood and the uh, extended neighborhood. So uh, we are trying to keep a balance out of these. And if you are like in any other, if you see the example, if you are doing good to someone, you are going to do good to someone and if you, the, you are not getting the return from that particular person or country, we just have to focus attention to our national interests. We are not going to, you know, cause them to do the, uh, give them the same thing. Because, uh, you know, it, it is our feeling, it is our policies that we are moving according to our balanced approach. If other, other countries are not reacting or acting according to our needs and requirements, we'll move to other places. Because what we have done is like, in um, uh, we have created, you know what? We have created China to Vladivostok kind of uh, uh, maritime uh, this thing. So in, in this case, what we have done, we have tried to, where we were not getting the access, we have tried to create our own access to that particular place. So this, when I say we are trying to ma manage and maintain and sustain relationships, we are trying to move, make our own ways. So we can't keep on sticking to somebody, some country that, okay, I am helping them. They are using China card. So what should I do? We have to maintain and sustain all those relationships. Yes, with some or more uh, that, uh, that, that keeps on changing. But our national interest is focused on balance approach. And we are going to do the same. Like when I said Vasudev Kutumbakam in his, our motto of our uh, new foreign policy. So where we have always tried to focus on, you know, uh, on humanity. We have always, always stood for something which is more required. You know, we are uh, talking about sustainability of resources. So we are focusing ourselves towards positive things. We have given yoga day. We have uh, we are encouraging millet and all these things. So so if somebody is doing negative, we are not going on their path. We are trying to move our own way, we make our own ways out, and are we are following our own policies of multilateralism. And this multilateralism is only way out in this uh, you know situation of turmoil. What India is doing is the best possible way. We are sustaining our peace and stability in our country. And that is the focus of our foreign policy. Thank you. Yes, next question. Come on, be quick. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you for your session, ma'am. Myself, Manju, and ma'am, I am pursuing my master's in lovely professional university. So my question, uh, one is related uh, from the session. It's about what do you mean by like sustainable relation? India always try to make a sustainable relation with every country. And my second question is related to like, uh, will India need to conduct the like howdy Trump or namaste kind of stunt in South Asia country? Because India has much more power in soft power. So if we conduct these kind of things or stunts, we can create more impact in our South Asia country. Because as a soft power, we need to control over the mind of the people. And this kind of stunts somehow help India in creating this power. So what would you say, ma'am? Yeah. So your first question is on sustainability. So what do you understand by sustainability? Tell me. Like, for the future, like for the present needs and as well as for the future needs. Yeah. So when we are talking about sustainability, we are talking about securing the resources, right? So we our new foreign policy, which um, not new foreign policy, I should say, the 2023 motto gave this sustainability, uh, focus on sustainability because all over the world, we'll be seeing we are affected by the wars. We have seen the pandemic. We have witnessed the pandemic and we have seen the practicality of situations. How a big nation like US also faced the similar situation like any poor country or any any country which is not underdeveloped or is developing, right? So we are focusing on sustainability. And when I say sustainability, I meant sustainability of resources, environment, biodiversity, ecosystem, everything, you know? So this is what I said, this is what I mean to say is sustaining relationship also. When you are sustaining relationship, 
you know that it is not uh, you know a path which is very smooth to go there will be challenges there will be turmoil there will be so many things like in bangladesh you see or in russia ukraine see you see in gaza whatever happening everybody is affected right so after this globalization or post globalized world no country can say that we are at peace we are not bothered about russia ukraine war we are not bothered about bangladesh because every country is interlinked due to some or the other thing okay so sustainability is our mission in we are trying to focus on that in order to sustain resources either of our own country or bringing resources from other country right and the other question was uh, on stunts you can't say stunts these are not stunts basically this is a pol policies you know when you have when i said that state is an entity and uh, like if you are a you are a personality okay you are born and brought up in certain uh, kind of an environment your family background your education system your traditions your culture your religion will make your personality right so you imagine a state to be you and your personality as your foreign policy right so the basic nature of your will not change isn't it our basic nature doesn't change but yes our uh, we evolve what you were 10 years before you are not today right we evolve with but with our environment with our situations with our uh, you know the amount we learn so the similar way even foreign policy keeps on changing and it changes like you will also change uh, yourself or your way of talking will change uh, when you are sitting in the interview and when you are talking to your friend right because there is some kind of interest when we are interacting the similar way we uh, change uh, we do not change the basic nature of foreign policy but we change our foreign policy or we create or evolve our foreign policy in such a way to adjust with other countries also so like you are saying the stunts it's not the stunts it is basically our policies which we keep on visiting and revisiting so for south asia or any other country we have been traditionally and civilizationally so much engaged we are to, like so much into it it is just part of our own country kind of you know traditions if you see so we are always there people to people contact is always there we have been it's since ages yes the, if one country is sitting uh, like if somebody is sitting and disturbing the entire system and trying to engage other countries involving other countries to to you know take because the, if you talk about china it has always been its policies has been very different from india we have never gone to their places and taken up their land or we have not gone to any of their states and making our own infrastructure what they are doing on our borders right so they have their own policies they are good at their own way i'm and we are good at our own way somebody is you know um, like bitching about you or something you are not going to change your own personality will you change your own personality no you will remain the same yes you will try to make your ways out of that and come out of the situation and keep your personality intact the similar way we have to keep out of that particular thing we have to maintain our own foreign policies and we have to stick to our own policies for our own national interest Okay